And now let's get you a better understanding into Chandrayaan 2. For that, I'm joined in by Mr. Ramesh Kapoor, who's an astrophysicist and joins me live from Bengaluru. I'm also joined in by Dr. Amitabha Ghosh, a space scientist on NASA Mars Rover Mission Control. She's joining uh, us from Washington, D.C. Let me quickly go across to Mr. Kapoor. So how significant is Chandrayaan 2 as a space mission taking into consideration? It will be launched on the southern pole of the moon. It's certainly a very important mission for India, for ISRO and for all of us because we have been looking forward to it uh, for a long time. So last 15 July it was called off, so we were disappointed but very soon ISRO came out uh, with a new launch date. With uh, Earlier they were trying with the idea of an August launch but of course they have been able to find a, a suitable window and that happens to be today in the afternoon. And uh, we very much hope that uh, today uh, lift off will be uh, completely hassle free and no snag will be uh, there uh, to, to uh, sort of uh, disappoint us. So I very much look forward to it. Mm -hmm. There is a spacecraft atop the GSLV Mark III rocket that is going to be uh, to launch it right. uh, into first into earthbound orbit. Later on, it will be on translunar trajectory and then finally it enters into the moon's orbit. And then, of course, uh, lander uh, will take a, uh, that uh, very uh, sort of uh, critical descent on the surface of the moon. And that is said to be the most difficult uh, part of the entire exercise. All right. We will be also looking into Chandrayaan 2 as an exercise, as you rightly mentioned. For now, let me also go across uh, to Dr. Amitabha Ghosh, who's also joining us here on Beyond. Dr. Ghosh, it's important to talk at this point about why is almost every space aspiring nation so enthusiastic, particularly about the moon? Okay, so the moon is the test bed where you really can test out technologies for space exploration, um, particularly where, when it comes to settlement when it comes for long-term presence. So the reason is the moon is just three days away. Mars uh, is six months away when it's on the same side of the sun as Earth. On the other side, if it's on the other side of the sun, it's even further. So if you were to test, say, critical life support systems, if you were to have a base on the moon where humans are there or humans are traveling, troubleshooting for the moon is much easier. Imagine if there was an emergency on a Martian base um, and you had to get the astronaut back to Earth, it would take uh, more right. than six months. And for Moon, it is much more doable. So so I guess the proximity makes the big, big case for why um, the Moon is a preferred destination. But there are differences, uh, and people would say that uh, Mars could equally have been an exciting des destination. The problem is um, Mars is also a more expensive destination. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> So certainly some very interesting points being made out there. We will continue our discussion, but staying with the story of Chandrayaan 2, it is a giant leap in India's space journey. India is on its way to make history and the ambitious lunar mission Chandrayaan 2 is all set to be launched in a few hours from now. And ahead of that launch, there's also a video that has been released by the Indian Space Research Organization that shows us how exactly the moon will work. Have a look as we return with our discussion. Start in T minus 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition.
getting back to our discussion with Dr. Amitabh Ghosh and uh, Mr. Ramesh Kapoor who are joining us live at the moment. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, Mr. Kapoor, I'd like to ask you, we just played out this beautiful video by ISRO which breaks down the entire journey from the time of takeoff till the time uh, the Chandrayaan actually lands on the moon surface. Why is it an extraordinary challenge to soft land on the moon? See, uh, there is no atmosphere on the uh, moon and we cannot use parachutes. So obviously, uh, this is a, uh, the greatest challenge uh, ISRO has faced. And uh, uh, this is a, for the first time ISRO is undertaking the uh, soft landing. So obviously, uh, the, uh, the structure of the lander is such that its legs should be down when it is uh, about to touch the surface of the moon. And so that is the attitude control. And then there are scram jets. You mm -hmm. see, uh, after the insertion of Chandrayaan into the orbit around the moon, that is, uh, we expect that that will happen on 20th August. So it's going to make several rounds of the uh, moon. And on 3rd September, most likely, uh, then uh, a lander will separate from the, uh, uh, the uh, spacecraft, right. that is the orbital. And then it is put into a... 30 into 100 uh, kilometer trajectory and then the trajectory is uh, slowly shrunk and as it is shrunk uh, a time will come when uh, about 5 kilometers above uh, the surface of the moon uh, the uh, engines are switched off and then scramjets are switched on and mm -hmm. then they slow down the fall of the uh, lander onto the surface of the moon so those uh, uh, perhaps those 15 minutes, as ISRO has said, uh, 15 minutes of horror or terror. Uh, obviously, <laughs> NASA also faces similar while uh, their uh, things are landing uh, on the surface of Mars. So it's uh, applicable to any space agency. So uh, we very much hope that everything uh, works uh, right. perfectly because all, there is a perfect algorithm uh, put, put into the computers of these uh, devices. Absolutely, so, and ISRO uh, is ensuring that it's a that sure shot. On 7th success. September, we will see the landing. Yes, 7th September yes, is going yeah. to be indeed a very, very crucial day for ISRO and for India, of course. On that note, let me also uh, bring in uh, Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, who is also joining us. Now, Doctor, how will finding water on this lunar surface prove beneficial? So, I think they have already found water, so it probably will be a cross-verification. Right. The reason you need water is for to essentially subsidize the cost of going to the moon with human beings because uh, water provides so so imagine if you were to traveling from delhi to washington and you have to cover you have to you have to carry all your water and your fuel for the return journey uh, you would end up carrying a huge amount of luggage and that would really spike costs launch costs so it's the same way here if you what to do a human mission to the moon, you need to find a way to extract water from the moon itself. Um, and you also need to find a way to extract uh, rocket fuel for the return journey. Right. Um, so this is where water comes into play. So the water is obviously there at the South Pole. So the moon has 14 days of sunshine and 14 days of darkness. Um, so you need some permanently shadowed areas of the moon to really stored this water, otherwise the water would evaporate. So there are some permanently shadowed craters where you can find water, um, but the challenge of course is it is at a very low temperature. It's as low as minus 248 degrees centigrade. So to actually extract this water, um, that's also not trivial. But at the first point, um, you need water. Um, for um, a cost-viable uh, human exploration mm -hmm. program to the moon. Mm. 
So clearly acquiring that water and extracting it are going to be some challenges that await ISRO at the moment. But also important to see how India's space program is an ambitious one and Chandrayaan 2 is marking a new milestone in India's spectacular space journey. ISRO has seven mega missions lined up for the next 10 years. The destinations are Mars, the Moon, Venus and the Sun's Corona. Let's also tell you what these upcoming projects are all about. First up is the Aditya L1 mission which will explore the Sun. And this is no ordinary sun exploration mission. This is ISRO's first planned probe to study the sun's corona and its atmosphere. The corona is the outer layer of the sun which extends thousands of kilometers above the visible disk around it. The mission is expected to be launched this year or early next year on a polar satellite launch vehicle or PSLV. Next up is a manned space mission. Remember Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his 2018 Independence Day address had said that India will attempt to send astronauts to space on a spacecraft called the Gaganyaan by 2022. Now, successful in India will be the fourth country to send a human to space. The Gaganyaan mission is India's biggest space mission so far and is set to cost a staggering 10,000 crore rupees. And last but not the least, ISRO is aiming to build India's very own space station. Although it's a work in progress project and the current timeline for this project is seven years. But according to ISRO's chief Dr. K. Sivan, the proposed station will weigh 15 to 20 tons and will be able to host people for 15 to 20 days. It will be used to conduct microgravity tests. Moving on, there's Venus. It's often described as Earth's twin sister and ISRO's Shukrayan mission. We'll explore this neighborhood planet. Now, ISRO intends to send an orbiter mission to study the atmosphere of Venus. Venus is made up primarily of carbon dioxide and the Shukrayan mission will study the dense hot atmosphere of Venus and the planet's surface using a probe. Let's also go back to our guests and uh, talk more about further space explorations. And uh, let me go back to uh, Dr. Amitabha Ghosh. Uh, Dr. Ghosh, how do you see uh, this race to space at the moment? Because it's not just uh, Roscosmos, NASA, ISRO, or even China. They're all promising bases. Do you see the moon anytime soon becoming a, zone, a conflict zone? No, I think this is um, largely um, media creation. If, if I might say, uh, I don't think there is a race. I think each country has its own priorities um, when they go about um, doing a specific uh, activity in space. Um, and so um, I don't see a race to the moon and everybody setting up bases. It's not that trivial. It is very expensive. Right. So what you just said is this is a space station. A space station is an orbiting platform where people live. A base in the moon would really mean uh, you need uh, you need power systems, you need uh, habitation modules. And that's already uh, in talks, I believe. That is in talks, but uh, the the price point is probably $100 billion. And uh, so, uh, as late as uh, 2040 and as early as 2028, I believe, that's when they are planning to set up bases, right? So it is. So we have to see when this really happens. NASA had a plan uh, in the two thousands to. Right. Uh, it was called the Constellation Program. So it, it's it's a huge effort. So f to recreate a environment on the moon where humans will be able to stay for three sixty five days, and it is possible. It's just um, um, ha it, it has happened in Antarctica. The, I think more interesting is perhaps the plans of Jeff Bezos uh, to uh, right. um, set up habitation on the moon. So so, so I think uh, everyone has a different trajectory. Uh, I don't think there is a race. I, I don't think there will be a conflict. Uh, the conflict can happen if you find something really precious on the moon. Hmm. And that can hmm. happen. Um, but until th then, see, remember the gold rush in, in the U.S., um, there is conflict when there is something precious to be extracted, mined from a from a particular area. So, so until we find that, and until that material can be eco economically transported to Earth, um, I don't see a race happening. 
All right. So from race, let's also talk about optimum utilization of resources. Let me uh, go across to Mr. Ramesh Kapoor at this moment on this question. Sir, how could the moon, you know, um, you know, this entire space exploration and the Chandrayaan 2 mission be a lesson for other countries to learn? Could India actually inspire um, other governments in terms of space optimization when it comes to meeting their desired uh, goals? Yeah, certainly yes, because although uh, each time we take uh, a step in terms of space exploration, it's almost uh, becomes the first because uh, new technology and new uh, ideas and new concepts for, for the uh, exploration of space. And eventually, uh, once we land on the moon, and the next uh, step is that uh, how and when we are able to build a station there. So once we build a station there, which will be perhaps uh, in a space of uh, say seven to ten years from now, uh, so far as India is concerned, which is what I uh, visualize, uh, is to will be able to do. So then the next step if there is uh, exploring uh, certain resources because right. not only the human beings uh, should be able to live there for a certain uh, period of time and uh, there should be certain utility uh, that is possible out of it. So uh, there is uh, umpteen possibilities and moon in terms of mineralogical resources is a very promising place. Apart from that, the, uh, the uh, fuel of the future, helium-3, that is very fancy talks have been there about it, but it, it will be about 30 years when fusion reactors are almost ready. But mm. by then, of course, there will be the space agencies which will devise ways how to be able to mine uh, helium-3 from there and then transport uh, it to the earth. Apart from that, uh, uh, moon will serve as base station. But then space is for all and it is for uh, cooperation, not for confrontation that every nation knows also. So I'm sure a few, uh, space agencies which already uh, cooperate and collaborate many times in the future also the same thing will happen. A very, very valid point made by you, Mr. Kapoor. On that note, let me also go back to um, Mr. Ghosh. Uh, Dr. Ghosh, this is my last question. And um, as, as, as uh, Mr. Kapoor rightly mentioned that space is for all, I would like to refer to the OST or the Outer Space Treaty. What, according to the, uh, what does the treaty state? Can companies legally extract resources from the moon? Since so now we have I, private players also in the picture. So that I really don't have an answer to. I don't know whether it has been worked out as to who, if, if there's something found in space, who does it belong to? Is it a country? Is it a company? Um, I don't know whether there is any such rule um, or uh, if there is any rule, then um, it is also possible that, you know, this is largely unregulated. So um, so you might have heard of people sending, selling land on the moon. Um, um, hmm. You know, there's internet sites that sell land on the moon. Of course, there is no basis for that, right? I mean, how are you going to claim that land? Um, so, so it's a legally undefined territory, it is possible. And if there are rules, I, I, I don't know, I am not perhaps the best person to ask. No worries, uh, but thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ghosh, for joining us. And a big thank you to Mr. Ramesh Kapoor also for bringing in their precious perspective here on We On. Of course, all of us are waiting with bated breath for uh, that much-awaited launch that is all set to take place at 2.43 p.m. Indian Standard Time.